We are your station for health. New research from UT Health shows the window of opportunity to provide possible treatments to patients suffering from traumatic brain injuries differs depending on whether the person is male or female. Dr. Rachel Siriani, Associate Professor of Neurosurgery at McGovern Medical School at UT Health, joins us with more during this Brain Awareness Month. Welcome to Houston's Morning Show and thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Can you start please by first telling us the difference between men and women when it comes to trauma brain injuries? Absolutely. So I think science and medicine as a field have known for a long time that men and women experience different outcomes following traumatic brain injury. So those injuries may be acquired under different circumstances. Uh, as an example, men are more likely to experience a traumatic brain injury due to an occupational hazard, whereas women are more likely to experience a TBI due to uh, assault or violence. And so we know that the circumstances under which the injury is acquired is, is very different, but we also know that those responses after the injury is required can be different as well. And our research is looking at some of the basic biological mechanisms by which uh, male versus female bodies respond. Mm -hmm. We are so fortunate to have UT Health here studying all these things so you can figure out better treatments. And, and through that research, have you found out more about the actual biology, as you were just sort of mentioning, of how male versus female bodies respond to these type of injuries? Yeah, so um, my research, which is done in, in collaboration with Dr. Sarah Stabenfeld, who's at Arizona State University, our collaborative research is focused on understanding what's called the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier is a network of cells and uh, physiological processes that protect the brain and maintain homeostasis or stability within the brain. Following a traumatic brain injury, the blood-brain barrier is damaged and that could have negative effects because it would allow things that are in the blood to reach the brain and that could further inflammation or deleterious immune processes. But we're hoping that it would provide an opportunity for treatment because during that time when the blood brain barrier has been opened up, we have a better opportunity to get drugs to the target tissues so that we can actually effectively treat the injured tissue. And during that time, how quickly do you need to get treatment? Do you have a timeline sort of of how long you could actually wait? Or I mean, obviously it needs to be pretty quick, I'm sure. Yeah, so these are preclinical models at this point. So we're not looking in humans, um, but based on our preclinical models, we expect that you're talking about something on the order of hours or days. So it may be that someone you know, receives a traumatic brain injury and that treatment is needed quickly how you time that treatment could be different between males and females. And that's what we're seeking to understand is exactly how do those uh, differences relate to uh, drug delivery? So can we get more of our therapeutic agent to the brain? Mm -hmm. And then what are the underlying mechanisms uh, that are regulating these processes? As you do all of your research and you're trying to answer all of these questions that you have, how do you hope that information will advance the treatment of TBIs? I, I hope it will. Um, right now, we don't really have effective treatment for TBIs. So if somebody believes that they have a TBI, they should absolutely go get uh, evaluated by a doctor right away. Uh, if there's a brain bleed, for instance, that's a very dangerous situation and, and needs to be ruled out. Um, but in terms of TBIs that don't have brain bleeds, we don't really have many effective therapies or anything that would be considered effective. So what we're seeking to do is develop new kinds of medicine and specifically to package the medicine within nanoparticles, polymer carriers that can do a better job of getting more drug to the brain to again, effectively treat that injured tissue to try to stop the deleterious uh, injury processes that proceed after a TBI. Well, it sounds high tech and I know you can all pull it off. Thank you for all you're doing at UT Health and then for sharing Thank that you. information so we know where we are right now. Thank you so much.